my back around. Hey guitar enthusiasts, we're gonna be feeling the blues in this lesson. I'm gonna teach you a very, very special groove that Tracy Chapman uses in her song, Give Me One Reason, and we're gonna do it step by step right here. So let's go over the chords that we're gonna use in this song. First, these are bar chords, but don't worry, if you can't play bar chords, you could always use power chords and it'll still sound pretty good. So the first chord we're gonna be using is an F sharp chord, okay? Or you could use an F sharp five power chord. Will also work well for this song. The other's gonna be a B major chord, or you can use a B5 power chord, also works out well. And then our five chord is gonna be a C sharp or C sharp five, all right? So we have one, four, five. Okay, those are gonna be our chords. F sharp, B, C sharp. Okay, and you can use the power chords, like I said, if you wanna make it easier. So now we're gonna show you how we're gonna apply this to a 12 bar blues form to give you this song. So we're using somewhat of a standard 12 bar blues form with some variations. But first, let's talk about what a normal 12 bar blues is. So a normal 12 bar blues usually would be four measures of the one chord, okay, two measures of the four chord, back to two measures of the one chord, and then we would have the five chord on the end, the four chord, and then two measures of the one chord. Now, if you don't know what all those numbers are, don't worry, we're gonna go through it step by step in this video right here. And Tracy follows this almost exactly to the T, but in a couple spots she changes things up. So let's talk about what happens there and then we'll get into the rhythm of how we're gonna play the song. So Tracy does something that we call a quick four, but she's actually doing like a quick four five here. Let me explain. So we have typically in 12 bar blues, you would play four measures of F sharp. In this song, we don't do that. We play one measure of F sharp and then the second measure is actually a split measure. It's gonna be the B and then C sharp and then back to A, or back to F sharp minor. So the chord progression would be F sharp minor, half measure of B, half measure of C, then F sharp minor for two more measures. So it's still doing four measures, it's just that second measure is split between the B chord and the C sharp chord. She also does this on the second measure of the second line. So typically the sixth measure of a 12 bar blues would be the second measure of the four chord. In this case, Tracy doesn't do that. She does do half of the measure as the four chord, but then she does half of the measure again as the C sharp chord. So once you understand those two simple variations, you have Tracy's complete 12 bar form. It's mostly the same except the second measure and the sixth measure are going to be that split measure of B and C sharp. So now that we have the form down, let's talk about the cool rhythm we can use for this. And I'm gonna show you the way I like to play. I'm gonna show you the way Tracy does it first. So I'm gonna show you a little spice I like to do when I used to play this song live. So just to refresh your memory on this groove, let's hear what it sounds like again. So it's a. So there's a little bit of a percussive element to it, but first let's break down the timing. Now this is a shuffle feel. I'm still gonna talk about it as one and two and three and four and, but just re realize that this is a shuffle blues feel. So the rhythm is going one, two, and, and four, and 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 what we're doing is we're alternating between the bass note, so whether you're playing a full bar chord or you're just playing the power chord, the bass note would be this top string on the, on the F sharp here. So it'd be bass, strum, bass. Okay, so it's gonna be bass, strum, bass, and then you would do it again, bass, strum, bass. So it's gonna be one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Very, very popular groove. One of the grooves that I go over uh, in my blues guitar course. And what it, we're doing here, again, is just playing bass, strumming the chord, back to the bass note. And you probably heard on my example is a little more percussive. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here to make that come to life. So we're gonna do bass and when we strum, 
we're gonna cut the chord off real quick. And this is where playing the full bar chords would be beneficial versus the power chord. You get a much more bigger canvas to do this on, but it's gonna be bass, strum, mute. And how we're in muting, we're releasing the tension on this power chord, or sorry, on the bar chords, so we're going. So as soon as you strum down, you're releasing the tension on the string and then putting it back on to get that bass note. So it'll be. Hear that? Okay, so you're just strumming real quick and then you're releasing the tension on the fretting hand to mute the strings. And that's how we get the rhythm. So it's. Okay, so that's how we're getting this percussive style rhythm. And that's the rhythm you would use for most of the song, except on those half measures. So on those measures, I kind of like going one, two, and one, two, and three, four, and. So I'm still doing the alternating bass. So it's one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so that's what I do on those measures. So we've got one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and. So I'm gonna play through this entire progression so that you guys can have something to play along and practice with, but stick around, because at the end, I'm gonna show you how to add in this cool little spice to your strumming. little cool extra spice and I want to show you guys how to do it. Right, let, so so let's take this to the, from the top just as a note in the beginning. Tracy's just tapping that open E string. Okay, she's just tapping that open bass string. One, two, three, F. Okay, so we're just gonna take it at the top from the F, but I just wanted to let you know if you hear the song, that's what she's doing. She's doing three open E's. One, two, three, and then F sharp. One, two, ready, and. And as with any 12 bar blues, once you get to the end, you just go right back to the beginning and play through it. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple little extra spices the way I used to play this song live that you guys might find really interesting and will make you sound like a better guitar player. So here's the cool little extra spice I wanna show you guys what it's gonna sound like. It's gonna sound like this. Okay, so I've got a little hammer on going here with my first finger. What am I doing? I'm playing an open string. So on the case of the F sharp, that's gonna be the open E. And I'm just hammering down my first finger. And this will work with power chords too. Okay, work with power chords or the full bar chord, whatever is easier for you. And I'm just going one E and then two. One E, two. So it's a really quick. Okay, one E, two. And now I'm not going back to the and after the two because I think that little extra spice adds enough in the beginning. So I'm going one E, two. And then I'm lifting my finger off again and four and. So I'm bouncing on and off that open string. So it's gonna be E, F sharp, E. I am playing the full chord though when I put the finger down. Okay, so it's gonna be So even when I play this, the, on the first note, I'm not playing the whole chord, but this part, I am playing the full chord. Even when the string is open, I'm catching string five and four for sure. So we've got.
Okay, so that's how we would time that. Now for the B, it's the same thing. The open string would be the open A string. Okay, now could you do this on the C sharp? Yeah, I don't particularly like the sound of it, so I would probably opt for the regular. Okay, I don't particularly like the sound of going from the A to that C sharp. I, I like the A to the B, um, but I just wanted to show you that extra spice that you guys can add in, and there's one more thing, but wait, there's more. So on the 10th measure, there's one extra little spice you can do. I don't know if Tracy really does this in a song, uh, but I like to do it sometimes. I think it sounds really, really cool, is we've got this C sharp chord, right? And then we're moving down to the B note. This is a very common thing that happens in blues anyway, so it's good for you guys to know it. We're gonna move chromatically from C sharp to C to B. So it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two. So the three is C sharp, the four is C, and then we got B. It's a really nice progression, a really great way to get from that five chord into the four. So let me do one more playthrough for you guys, putting all of these elements together so that you can practice adding in these couple little spices. One, two, ready, and. enjoyed this 12 bar blues lesson then make sure to go in the description below and check out my blues guitar course where we go over grooves like this I show you how to move around a 12 bar blues progression in different ways major blues minor blues different chord variations you can use and even ways to start soloing over some of these 12 bar blues progressions so if you're interested in taking your blues playing to the next level go to the link in the description below and I'll see you guys in another lesson.